ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing AMD, specifically the fact that the company are working on crypto mining GPUs. Yeah, I'm sure that's causing some groans in the comments already. NVIDIA have already announced that they're doing this, of course. They are going to be using a mixture of GPUs, some of them on the Turing architecture, which of course is also a different process, it's 12nm, as well as one GPU which is based on Ampere. It seems to essentially be a variant of the RTX 3080. The question is with the 3080 silicon, which is of course going to be for mining, whether that's a defective die or whether NVIDIA are basically essentially cutting down the supply which could go to gamers. But again, focusing on AMD, this info comes to us through multiple sources, including Forenix.com and also Kamachi. And there have been rumours of mining-focused AMD SKUs for a while now. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it a couple of times on the channel, but now this uh, evidence is heating up quite substantially. The specifications are basically identical to the uh, gaming-focused SKUs, albeit with the absence of the ability to display an image. So again, this basically renders these cards as useless for anything other than the ability to, well, do mining. According to Michael over at Foronix.com, I'm going to read this verbatim, uh, given NVIDIA just announced their CMP mining cards, perhaps AMD will soon be announcing these Navi 1X Bitcoin mining SKUs, end quote. And NVIDIA will, of course, be actually launching their GPUs, or I suppose CMPs, if you want to use NVIDIA's own terminology, later this month. So it wouldn't really surprise me if AMD have these waiting in the wings, because let's just face it, mining is extremely profitable and AMD could quickly turn a profit. The negative, and I'm sure many of you have already picked up on this, is that well, yeah, with Turing, with uh, NVIDIA's CMP cards, at least the lower end ones, it is on a different process. Now, of course, there are some bits which are uniform across different products, for example, memory. But generally speaking, the real constraint with AMD's products, of course, has been the TSMC 7NM capacity. Now, TSMC on their 7NM capacity are obviously providing it to AMD along with several other companies. And AMD, too, have Microsoft as well as Sony as their clients. And to my understanding, you basically, let's just say that AMD's capacity is 100%, obviously not 100% of TSMC, but let's just say that they have 100% supply, and then you have Sony and Microsoft taking being taken out of AMD's chunk. So clearly, this is one of the reasons that there have been some uh, supply issues with RDNA 2 as well as Ryzen uh, 5000 series processors. In fact, to my understanding, particularly at the launch of PlayStation 5 and Xbox, or rather the months prior, um, basically Microsoft and Sony got some type of priority deal for uh, the number of assets produced. Because obviously when you're selling a console, you can't just be like, well, we've got five units. You clearly need millions of systems. So Sony and Microsoft almost certainly put that into some type of contractual obligation for AMD. And to be honest with you, I'm also hearing it from a couple of sources as well that this was a fact. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this works with RDNA 1, given, as you probably understand by now, it's still on the same 7nm process. Of course, this is not officially confirmed. And AMD may be waiting for the shortages to reduce a little bit so that they don't get so much criticism. But, um, yeah, I mean, what would be ideal is if AMD were instead able to put this onto a different uh, GPU architecture, such as Polaris, but obviously that's not really a thing which can happen. So here we are. And, of course, this is going to suck a little bit. The only good thing, and I say that in such a way, is that... Um, the actual dies of Narve 1X, such as the uh, Narve 10 SKUs, are fairly, fairly small, so technically speaking, they do get a lot of uh, ASICs out of each silicon wafer compared to something like a Narve 21 die, but that's not really a positive. That's like me saying to you, well, the good news is you've got only one shin kicked rather than two shins. Continuing with AMD for a moment longer, we also have some specifications 
of Narve 23. This is not quite the lowest end uh, die in the uh, RDNA2 stack. That, from what we understand anyway, is going to be Narve 24. 3dcenter.org have actually compiled a list of the specifications together, so I'll link that article in the video description. Uh, but, long story short, Narve 23 has 32 compute units. We've known this for a while, and this is on a 128-bit bus. So this is actually way slimmer than the 192-bit bus, which is found in Narve 22, which is the same GPU uh, which, of course, powers, let's say, the RX 6700 XT. The real Aoi, the Ouchi, is that the Infinity Cache has been cut substantially. It's now one quarter that of Narve 21, or if you prefer, one third of Narve 22. So it's only 32 megabytes. Now, of course, there are some um, reasons that you can certainly say that 32 megabytes is enough. For one, it only has 32 compute units, and second, the performance targets of Narve 23 is certainly not going to be like 4K gaming at 120 frames a second. Uh, it's going to, of course, be more of a like 1080p card. It is also going to be almost certainly as cheap as possible, and the die size is also going to be pretty small. So this is one of the ways that you can do that by having a pretty narrow bus. This is speculation on my part, although... Um, I believe one source told me a while ago that the RX 6700 Vanilla may not have the same size Infinity Cache as the RX 6700 XT. Now, assuming this is correct, one way that AMD could further differentiate the RX 6700 and 6700 XT, assuming the 6700 ever does get released, is that they could potentially... Uh, cut the size of the Infinity Cache to, let's say, uh, 64 megabytes, which would allow them to better use the Narve 22 die. Again, that is not a leak, so do not take that as uh, confirmed, but just looking at uh, AMD's product stack, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the ways that they did manage to do that. I also want to say, uh, because I keep mentioning this on Twitter, and I keep forgetting to actually say it in a video, so I'm going to throw it in here, I am hearing that Cortex was right on the fact that there are actually different TDP variants of the RX 6700 XT. I actually meant to say this in my recent video where I was detailing the ray tracing performance of the RX 6700 XT and also uh, what was happening with the Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is actually going to be a video coming on the channel soon. It's actually the reason I'm not on camera today because I'm way too busy writing a script for that as well as a PlayStation 5 exclusive. So uh, yeah, I'm basically trying to throw this video out as quickly as possible so that I can get back to the script writing. But what I will say is that, um, to my understanding anyway, there are two variants of the 6700 XT. Basically, one has a higher TDP and one has a lower TDP. To what I understand, the variant that AMD showed off at their event, that was the higher TDP variant. Uh, and also, I want to stress that I believe that SAM was on for those benchmarks. And that's just something to be uh, cognizant of. And finally... Asus have done an oopsie. It seems that AABs love to do an oopsie, but Asus have done an oopsie and have basically confirmed the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti. We have heard mention, of course, of the 3050 before, but now that Asus have essentially confirmed it. Furthermore, this particular listing seems to hint that we are looking at a GPU which has 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Be interesting to see whether there are 8 gigabyte variants of this as well. And it is, of course, utilizing the GA106 silicon. There are not full specifications of this GPU yet, and that's putting it mildly. We do not know the number of CUDA cores. It seems that the TGP that we're seeing here is going to be 60 watts, at least according to this particular leak. But critically, we can ascertain a few things. Because it's called RTX, most likely ray tracing cores are present, as well as tentacles, which of course means that ray tracing as well as DLSS are supported. Ray tracing with a 3050 Ti, you can probably take or leave it, like depending on the title, but I do believe that uh, upsampling tech on a kind of a more budget or mid-range GPU is incredibly important. Yeah, sure, on an RTX 3080 or whatever, it's great. Like, you can, you know, crank the settings, have ray tracing galore, and all of that's amazing. However, on a lower performance tier product, 
it basically gives you just that extra bit of performance, like you could run a 1080p with ultra high frame rates, or maybe even some games at 1080p and upsample them to 1440p. Of course, the 4GB of memory may also be a problem there, but still, it is going to be good for 1080p, like you could render internally at 720p, which also could be just pretty good performance. I'm going to be interested to see what this GPU is actually capable of on the desktop. Uh, ultimately, of course, it really does come down to the pricing, as always with this stuff, as well as the rest of the specifications, but it does seem like Papa is very content to provide us with DLSS, and yeah, uh, NVIDIA are pushing DLSS heavily um, over the next couple of years. This is not going to be anything different. It is obviously one of the USPs from NVIDIA at the moment, even when AMD get their super um, super resolution tech out, I still think NVIDIA are going to have the edge. And so you better believe that NVIDIA are going to just grind that edge to a sh finely honed point and then keep poking AMD with it. With all of that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.